Hello, everyone. Hi. Look who's back. I am alive. <laughs> Look what I found on the side of the road. Literally. <laughs> he finally is done with his many obligations. I mean, he's not done teaching. No. But, but That's oh, one of the weeks is done. <laughs> we are actually bipping and bopping around today going thrifting. I just kind of <laughs> asked Ryan, like, what do you want to do today? Please be in a video with me. Cool. Everyone misses you. So I know. I. I miss everybody. So he said that he wanted to do some fall thrifting. So we're going to go to some of our favorite stops, as in unique, yes. of course. I'm and then we are actually... haven't been there in so long. We're actually going to go to our local Goodwill as well. It used to be super good, like when we started reselling and we first... Mm -hmm. When Ryan kind of first started to come up to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like fluctuated. So like you yeah. can have good days, but some days like meh. Mm -hmm. Unique is always good, I feel mm -hmm. like. And then actually our first stop, if you can see it right here, we are actually at Slavers. Savers. So we are going to savers which i have a very rocky relationship with <laughs> you have definitely been like put through the ringer a couple of times yeah savers, savers and i are not the best friends yeah. and neither of us are like huge fans of savers in any way shape or form they mark everything i'm not up. a fan of their prices i'll but, say that but you found some really good stuff here i before. have found some really good things at the savers debbie's favorite wallet of all time this is my reseller claim to fame her little penguin tory birch wallet here was at the savers for four dollars and she has used that thing since the day like when she dies, that's where we're going to put her ashes. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in, in the, the car Yeah, we're going to just fill it up full of, yeah. full of debris. And then you've also found a Chanel heels. Yes, I have some Chanel shoes here. They were like ballet mm -hmm. flat heels, weren't they? Yeah. It could be good, could be bad. Yeah. Who knows? I guess my goals for the day was I really, really hope that they have their jacket and coat sections mm -hmm. out. Last time I was at Savers, which was a while ago, they did not. Unique was just starting last time I went, and I don't think that our Goodwill did. But I would love to see some fun jackets yeah. and coats and blazers. Fall stuff. Goals, things. I need things still because I do not know, as with teaching, when I will have days off to do anything. So the more that I can hoard my basement, I feel like a bear yeah. going into hibernation, literally. literally. Like I just like, I like in Over the Hedge, the DreamWorks animated classic movie, we have to fill the log. We have to fill the log all the way to the top. And just so you guys know, before we go in, Ryan's new school, now he's full time. So the road is pretty, it's pretty rocky right now. As in, we can't guarantee specific amounts of videos Ryan will be in for the first maybe couple months. No. He's going to try his hardest to basically always be in What's Old Saturday. Last mm -hmm. week was just very poor, Can't make poor it, timing. Unfortunately. Any other weekend after the fact is like wide open, yeah. which is wonderful. And I do have some little things in my own head because I still want to, I want to be in the videos. I miss the folks. I miss the internet. I miss the things. So I'm thinking about once I kind of get settled in my school year and once I do really get into my routine, I have some little surprises planned for me. Yeah. That maybe. I'm still trying to work on and figure out how we're gonna do that but maybe some it's in here. maybe some solo videos of just ryan right here. and yeah. also we're gonna shoot to have him in one video a week again there is no guarantee on that on some weeks and then we're gonna shoot to have him in like valentine videos too when those come mm -hmm. out like once a month yeah there definitely will at least be one a week that's just me that'll most likely be like the bins halls on thursdays mm -hmm. we're gonna try our hardest for ryan on tuesdays and then ryan will definitely be in saturdays so he's not like leaving no this has just been a bumpy start and we're still in the bumpy start yes, so it's gonna are. be shaky for a while but please bear with us thank you we're gonna try our best but let's go shopping. Let's go find some things. My first find is actually something I have been looking for for so long. I found this beautiful pair of black penny loafers. They are actually from the brand ASOS. I am so excited to have these. They fit me perfectly with a pair of socks. They will be a dream. This is one of my many examples of how expensive Savers has gotten over the past couple years. This no-name, very poor quality bag, they had it $22. One of my favorite things to sell recently has been clogs, so I'm always kind of looking out for them, always looking for the good brands. These were really adorable, but they were a little pricey and I didn't recognize the brand, but they were still super cute. Okay, so here's a teachable moment. These are SJP by Sarah Jessica Parker. I was actually really into these. $16 seemed kind of a lot, but some of her shoes, as I was doing some research, are so expensive, I had no idea. I passed on these just because comps weren't that good, but they were still super cute. But they were in really, really good shape. They just had a little bit of wear on the bottom of the sole. Okay. 
This pair of shoes literally put my jaw on the floor. They were this like kind of neutral, really cheap feeling pair of suede or what I want to call suede shoes and they were by LuLaRoe. I had no idea that LuLaRoe was A, still around and B, making shoes and they wanted $16 for them. Woofed. One of the first things I actually got for myself to sell was this really amazing, really super cool Y2K textured flowy skirt. These have been doing really well for me on Depop. And this one was only a $4.79 minus the 20% off. And right down the row from that first blue skirt was this really amazing knit, kind of like peachy colored midi skirt. I thought for a quick second this could be a St. John piece. It is not. It was $4.79 as well. I love the pleats. This gives me very ballet core for some reason. Probably the color. It was $4.79 minus the 20% off, but this was a union made piece, which I was very excited about. And as we change seasons, I have been really looking for a little bit more fall stuff, some sweaters, some flannels, some jeans. I loved this sweater. It was Urban Outfitters. It was $4.79 minus the discount, which is a great, great price. And I love this like really fall color palette that it had going on. It was super cute. If you know me, if you know anything about this channel, you would know that I am an absolute Disney fanatic. I love anything Disney. It's amazing. And so I immediately picked up this shirt when I found it. I have never really seen anything with just these kind of like minimal character outlines on it. So I thought this was kind of a unique piece. I also loved that the buttons said Mickey on them. I think that is a very adorable, very Disney attention to detail. This Parker top, I did grab it just in case it was something fancy or something rare or it was some kind of sought after piece. It unfortunately was not. They wanted $7.79 for it, which isn't really a bad price. Parker as a brand just does really horrible for me personally. So I ended up leaving this piece behind, but it was still really cute with the snake print. This Levi's top, I was really tempted to get. It was only $5.49, $5.29, excuse me. But I loved these really amazing billowy sleeves. I looked up comps though, and unfortunately, they just really weren't there. So even minus the 20%, I just didn't want to pay that price. This next top, I was actually kind of excited to find. It was a designer piece. It is 3.1 Philip Lim. He, kind of like Parker, does absolutely terrible for me now. I cannot sell his stuff for literally anything. He had a Target collab that was pretty successful, maybe five, 10 years ago, but this brand just sits for me. I knew what this little tunic dress was from a quarter mile away. It's a free people dress. I do not remember the name off the top of my head. I've sold this a few times before. This material is really finicky and with these little snags on the front, I really wasn't sure if I could depull that off. So I did leave it there, but it was a good price. This was potentially the second thing that I picked up for myself today. I really loved it. If you don't know, it is a SpongeBob SquarePants meme. This painting is called Bold and Brash from our lovely friend Squidward. I loved it so much, but unfortunately, I just don't need any more sweatshirts. It didn't really feel like it was that high quality either, so I did leave it behind, but it was still such a good joke. My first stop in Savers was to walk through the Halloween section. My favorite thing about Halloween sections at our local thrift stores is usually they fill them with vintage Halloween sweaters and other Halloween graphic tees, but unfortunately this year it seems like none of the stores are really doing that. It's just old costumes. Since the Halloween section did not deliver, I instead moved on to the pants section. First thing I spotted was a pair of Pilcrow pants. These are something that I definitely would have picked up maybe three, four years ago at this point, but now a pair of skinny velvet Stet pants I am not picking up. Even though the price was honestly decent, still passing. Then I spotted these J. Crew wide leg striped pants. These were very spring and summery, but they were actually new with tags. I highly considered these. Their price was even pretty good for savers. I did end up passing on them in the end too. Then I spotted some joie pants, and though these were once again a really cute style, I had to pass on these too. The price again on these, not that bad, but joie just does so bad. Comps were like 15. I spotted these Armani Collezioni pants, and again, the price was shockingly good. I don't know what's up with savers, but I had to pass on these. There's nowhere to sell stuff like this. There's Ryan. Then I moved on to the jeans. I love that the jeans are lined up in a way that you can honestly just walk down the aisle and see all the labels. Though if you really want to get a good look, you do have to flip through them. So I flipped through some. The 
first label that had stuck out to me was Madewell, though these were skinny jeans and they were actually 9 inch high rise, so that was definitely a pass. The next pair that stuck out to me was this pair. It's actually an ASOS brand, and it's a cute style, but I'm not paying that much for ASOS. There were also some BDGs, but these were quite old, and they were super, super skinny. Then I moved on to the blazers. I had been looking everywhere for this section, and they had some other sign kind of blocking the blazers sign, so I couldn't find them. Finally, I did. This is the only jacket kind of section they have in the store, so of course I had to look through it. I found this structured and tailor blazer for only $7.99. I really, really considered getting this even though it's actually from 2016, but it ended up having some pilling at the wrists and pilling at the neck collar, so I had to skip on it, unfortunately. Savers also had this Pendleton blazer. I really like the contrast trim to it, but this was not a wool piece by Pendleton. I like that it's a tall piece, but with Pendleton, I would prefer it to be wool, so I passed on this as well. And though this is pretty little thing, the color definitely screamed Ryan. I thought that was funny. Next up, for some reason, I got excited for like two seconds about this. It's a moth jacket, and then I looked at it more, and I was like, why did I think this was a good find? So that was definitely a skip, very dated. There was this pair of boots that stood out to me just because of the style, and then when I looked at them, they were actually by Stuart Weitzman. I definitely wouldn't pay much for Stuart Weitzman. Maybe I sometimes get it in the bins, but otherwise I have to pass on it, unless it was a super new pair. I thought that this was Vera Bradley from the back, and I wanted to look just to see if it would be like Debbie's size or something, but instead it was Urban Outfitters, so I offered it to Ryan, and he actually did want it. Do you see what I see? I was walking by this aisle, and what caught my eye? A Favorite Daughter label, so I had to grab that, and it's actually a Favorite Daughter graphic sweatshirt. Super excited to find this. I don't know what part of my brain stored away the memory of seeing this sweater at an anthropology at some point, but it's RD style, which is rarely anthro, so I was second guessing myself. But then after Google reverse image searching it, it definitely, absolutely is anthro. I don't know how I remembered that. Well, Ryan almost broke his phone. My poor phone case has been through <laughs> so much, and I have not. Oh. Screen protectors. Screen protectors cracked, awesome. but it already was. We are at probably the most promising stop of the three. Both of our favorite thrift stores. It's been my favorite thrift store since I was like nine. Lots of stuff, lots of good stuff. Still want a good coat. Let's go. Ah, uh, unique. One of my favorite thrift stores ever. And as always, I always start in the shoes. This is a pair of Hunter boots. I am trying to show you very unsuccessfully that they were $22. That's just a little bit high for me. Hunter boots haven't done that good in the past. So I think these are gonna be more of a bins pickup for me in the future. They were in really good condition, especially for a black pair. They didn't have any of that Hunter fogging that they can get. These were kind of a surprise to me. So I didn't see a price on them initially, but the leather felt really good. They were kind of heavy. So I looked up the name of these. It is printed on the smallest font possible, of course, on the inside of the tag, and it turns out these are by the brand Diba, D-I-B-A. But upon further research, these were sold at Free People and they were quite expensive. So I did pick these up. And once I opened my eyes and realized the price tag was right at the bottom of the shoe and they were only $6.49 minus the discount, 100% picked up. I had heard of this brand a couple of times before. It's Australia Luxe Collective. I thought it was kind of in the UGG family, but unfortunately I looked up comps on these and they are more of like an Amazon, like DSW kind of a situation. They were really cute and they were a really good price at only $4.79, but unfortunately I did end up passing on these. As I was perusing, I found this really amazing, really hysterical vintage, which I think this was supposed to be a yard sign that you put on like a stake and then stick it in your grass for Jack. He did unfortunately pass on it, but I thought it was still so cute and for only seven bucks. 
This pair of Levi's absolutely wrecked my heart, stomped on it, ripped it out of my chest and threw it in the ground. They were an adorable pair of vintage, I wanna say late 80s Levi's. I think they were a 510 if I'm not mistaken with the button fly. They were a size 28, great size, but unfortunately upon further inspection, they had some stains inside that I was not gonna be able to get out. These J. Crew heels were really not that bad of a price at $9.49 minus the 20%. And they do fall in line with the fall 2022 trend of everything being metallic and silver metallic, but unfortunately these just had a little bit too much wear need to pick them up, but they were still really cute. This little coach wristlet I hemmed and hawed over. I know these are so popular right now and they do so good, but $10, $8 minus the discount was still kind of a lot to pay. I usually only really pick these up in the bins unless it's like a more traditional, like more substantial handbag. I did end up leaving this behind and I'm kind of regretting my decision, but hopefully somebody else will enjoy it. As I was giving the jackets a quick look through, I found this cabbie jacket. I thought it was really fun. I love this print, but unfortunately $11.49 really was a little bit too much for me to pay and I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be this kind of like broken in distressed look or if that was just from somebody wearing it too many times so I did leave it behind. This jacket like that pair of Levi's absolutely ripped my heart out of my chest and stomped it all over the ground. It was this beautiful Pendleton jacket it was only $17 minus the discount in this amazing green plaid with this kind of like bomber style to it. It felt amazing I loved it so much but unfortunately on the back they the mods had gone to town. There were holes everywhere in this thing. There's one right there, and I don't know if I showed that many on camera, but there was probably 15 to 20, which is so heartbreaking. Like I've been saying, I have been trying to get some more fall specific things to get listed, and I loved this Granny's cardigan, but unfortunately, it had a lot of wear on it, but this would have done so good on Depop with all these colors, and I love that it was like a bigger, chunkier cardigan. I did really enjoy this chaser sweater. It was only $13, which I don't think for a new tags item is really that bad. Whatever boutique they had the set originally, it was $100. I still thought it was kind of cute. I like the champagne dreams phrase. I thought the wording was kind of cute with the little collegiate things. We kind of go into football season, but the neckline is what really kind of stopped me from getting this. It just looked a little dated because it was so wide. So I did end up leaving this behind. I was honestly kind of excited to find a pair of these leggings. They were only $6. They are by the brand Tiki. I promise I will dig the tag out in a little bit. Some of these are kind of like what LuLaRoe used to be back in the day. Some of them literally are unicorns, <laughs> these being one of them. Yogis really enjoy these and I have sold them for upwards of $40, $50 and I've sold them for $20, $30. It all just depends on the style. This one looks like they're going for about 50 bucks. In Unique, the first area I go to is the new carts coming out. They don't always have them, but if you hit it at the right time, they do. First off, I spotted this Love Your Melon. I knew from about a mile away that that was a Love Your Melon. At the bottom of this rack, they had some bags. None of them were catching my eye. I didn't see any real leather anywhere, so I didn't even look at any. In the next cart, I spotted what was definitely another Love Your Melon, and sure enough, it was. Like we say, these are a dime a dozen here. Otherwise, the racks didn't really deliver. Uh, sure, Jan. So instead, I moved on to the jackets. I'm so happy Unique is actually starting to put out a jacket section, so I'm gonna look through this and I will show you guys anything of note. First up, I found this Pendleton plaid wool kind of bomber jacket. I know that Ryan showed this to you earlier, but I did find it right when I got here and I didn't notice it had any holes in it. I still wasn't gonna get it for that price, so I passed. <laughs> So then I moved on to the blazers. They keep the blazers in a separate section from the light jackets and the light jackets were bad. So hopefully the blazers are good. 
The first blazer I spotted was this Barbie pink Lane Bryant Bryant blazer. I honestly would have picked this up if it was a bit cheaper, but $13.50 even with a discount is a little too high, though I love the color and I love the plus size of it, still not going to get it. It also was from 2018. Maybe if it was 2021 or 22, I'd consider it more. Next up, I moved on to the sweaters. They are just starting to put out the sweater section as well, so there's not too many, but there are some. And the first sweater I spotted was this Nick and Zoe. Nick and Zoe has a high retail, but unfortunately awful, awful, awful resale. If it had good resale, I'd be rich because it's all over here. Then I moved on to the pants and I found this J. Crew Italian wool collaboration. Usually these are great pickups, but I looked up this collaboration and it does not have that much value. These go for like $22 to $28, so I'm gonna pass. I also found these really cute pants. They are corduroy and velvet, super, super soft. They're just by Cider, which is kind of like a Shein situation, so I'm definitely not gonna be grabbing these. This was pretty disappointing. These are some really cute white corduroy Everlane pants. Though they were double zero, which is not very exciting, they were also marked at $16.99. So even with a discount, that is a total, total pass. This was honestly probably the cutest thing I found in this entire store. Just this random Polo Ralph Lauren vintage golf vest. Though I'm not gonna get it, I guess it was okay. So Ryan checked out with his couple items and I left empty handed from Unique. Well, Unique was kind of a flop era, but hopefully uh, our our home base comes in for us. Our little hero comes in clutch. See another Halloween sign. The Halloween areas have not been as good as they are in past years. Usually they fill them with all kinds of like funky regular clothes, but this year they're kind of just putting crap. Or she in. Story of my life. And the first thing at our final stop of the day was this really amazing pair of 721 Levi's. They were only $9. I don't usually get the 721s, but I really liked this kind of two-tone raw hem situation they had going on. And I would have gotten them if they didn't have this like wear to the crotch already. So sad, but such a cute pair of jeans. Speaking of so sad, this wonderful pair of very well-loved frame, like high skinny jeans, these were $11. They also had a little bit of a busted knee detail. I'm not 100% sure if that was supposed to be there or if that was just from being worn. These stayed behind. I really kind of hemmed and hawed with this pair of American Eagle jeans as well. They were $9, which was my main point of concern. They were this really adorable pair of baggy jeans. I think they were literally just called the baggy jean, yeah. They were from 2021, if I'm not mistaken, and I just couldn't get over the fact that I was gonna pay $9 for a pair of American Eagle jeans. This was one of the only things I ended up picking up from Lakeville Goodwill today. It was this really amazing pair of Y2K faux leather, high-waisted, flared pants. These were so cool. These were so amazing. I think they're gonna be perfect for Halloween, as well as the Depop girlies. I unfortunately ended up passing on this Banana Republic blazer. It was amazing. I love the blue velvet. But unfortunately, comps just weren't there. It was from 2019, and I know some of their suiting stuff can do pretty well, but I just wasn't willing to pay the $11 for this. This is something that if it wasn't $9, I definitely would have got it. It's a Bowden piece. I really love this kind of like washed linen look to it. This color was amazing. The lattice lace detail I thought was super cute, but there's no way that I'm going to pay $9 for a Bowden top. similar situation as the Banana Republic blazer, this Levi's jacket, though it was really adorable, and I really liked this interesting kind of raw hem, fringy detail to it. The cops just weren't there, so I did leave that one behind. This is another example of something that I ended up leaving behind. It is the newer version of the Free People Alpine cuff, if I'm not mistaken. They wanted $11 for it, no way. And finally, one more example of something I am not willing to pay the Goodwill price for, another Bowden piece. This is newer label, they wanted $11. I would have gotten this if it didn't look like it had as much wash wear as it did. The blue was just really faded. 
these socks I thought were so much fun and I'd never seen anything like this at my Goodwill before but they had all these really amazing, really funny, they were actually super soft too, kind of like funny cutesy little socks. So I may go back and grab a couple of pairs. Kind of like at Savers, I headed to the Halloween clothing and costumes section first at Goodwill. This is the section that I like at Goodwill's, though this year my store only has like kids clothes, but they have graphic tees and all kinds of pajamas that are spooky, which I love. In the jeans section, there was this pair of American Eagle jeans that I totally would have grabbed at the bins. They're the baggy jeans, but I will not be paying $9 for them at a Goodwill. And actually, then I found out they had a mark to them, so I probably wouldn't even get them at the bins. But I couldn't see myself spending $9 on really any American Eagle jeans. In the blazers, I was really tempted to pick up this vintage Jones New York blazer. It was only $7 and it was 100% real wool, made in the US, super cute colors. I ended up skipping. I'd get it at the bins though. Behind it, I found this Ann Taylor blazer that I did end up grabbing. This was only $9, and upon looking it up, it is from, I believe, 2020, and this is $189 new, which is crazy, so I can't skip it. This is a little shysty. So there's this Gap blazer, linen, cute, new with tags, whatever, $12.99. Now they're covering the retail price on the tags with a second Goodwill sticker. That's shysty. I naturally skip the boucle kind of style jackets and I need to learn and teach myself to not since we've learned that those are so trendy this fall. So I did look this up, not worth getting, but I need to start checking them. Then I found this blazer that was so cute. I love the stripes, I love the colors, and it's by Eloqui. For some reason, all of the stores around us mark Eloqui super high. I will not be paying $11 for this, but I would love to find it for cheaper or at the bins. It even had this really cool big belt to the back. I think it's adorable. Then I found this blank NYC jacket sweater situation. It was $11. It had this faux leather sleeve to it and faux leather collar and the rest was wool. I do not like to sell this brand, so of course I pass. In the men's jackets, it ended up being totally worth checking. I found this really interesting ultra suede blazer and so I had to check what it was and it ended up being a John Varvatos blazer. It's not leather but it feels like it. It is so nice, and I would probably freak knowing the retail on this thing. So happy I found this. I found another blank NYC. This one is even worse. Well, they might both be bad. So this is like faux leather sleeves, and it's a denim jacket that's like really fitted. Not gonna be grabbing that. This H&M blazer, however, was adorable, and I would actually pick this up at the bins. Double-breasted, I can tell it's oversized, and it's so cute. I love the slub cotton green look. Then I found this Daydreamer sweatshirt. It's tie-dye. Daydreamer sometimes is free people. This one was just like a Nordstrom Rack one, so I definitely skipped it for nine bucks. And last at Goodwill is a sweater. I would love to find at the bins, but $11 for a J. Crew outlet is pretty crazy Goodwill. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little fall thrift with us. It was so nice to have Ryan back in a video with me. It just felt right and it just felt normal again. Today is actually Tuesday that I'm filming this little clip at the end and I just got back from the bins for the Thursday bins haul that we're gonna have and y'all, the bins were good. Stay tuned for the Thursday video where I'm gonna show you all the stuff that I got at the bins. It's great stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Ryan and I. He will be back for What's Sold Saturday this Saturday, but let us know if you like this. We had a blast and we will see you guys on Saturday or I will see you guys on Thursday. Goodbye.